Well, good evening and welcome to this special edition of Reality Check. Over the next half hour, we're going to take a look at some of the recent bills that have negated many of your constitutional rights. That includes the ways the feds have claimed that in order to fight the war on terror, they must remove your constitutional protections. So here's what we've got on tap for you tonight. A bill known as the EEA, or the Enemy Expatriation Act. It essentially allows the feds to strip you of your citizenship if you're declared a terrorist. I'll give you an update on what's happening with the EEA. We're also looking at the president's power to assassinate U.S. citizens who have been declared terrorists, even when those people have never had a trial. There is at least one case so far. And we're also going to explain one of the most stunning bills ever passed by the U.S. Congress and signed into law by any president. A provision in the National Defense Authorization Act allowing American citizens to be arrested and held indefinitely without charges or trial simply because the president deems them a terrorist. And we're going to show you why, despite President Obama's public stance of being uncomfortable with this power, why it was his administration that demanded the power. Let's begin with the NDAA and what it's all about. The National Defense Authorization Act is, in and of itself, really nothing shocking. In fact, it's a bill that is regularly passed by Congress to fund the U.S. military. But it was in 2011 that a provision within that bill made it anything but ordinary. The provision to allow any, any person who's deemed an al-Qaeda operative or an operative of one of the affiliates to be held indefinitely, without trial. In December, just after the Senate passed the bill and sent it on to the president, we gave you the details of this bill. The National Defense Authorization Act does more than just fund our military. Tuesday, the Senate approved moving forward on a vote. But it was in June when I first told you the House approved this bill. And as I told you then, it includes Section 1034. That section states, the United States is engaged in an armed conflict with Al-Qaeda, the Taliban, and associated forces. Notice that term. And those entities continue to pose a threat to the United States and its citizens, both domestically and abroad. It goes on to give the president the authority to use all necessary and appropriate force during the current armed conflict with Al-Qaeda, the Taliban, and those associated forces. So let's look at this one piece at a time. Who does the president have the authority to take action against? This isn't just Al-Qaeda. Again, it's any one part of an associated force. Associated forces that are engaged in hostilities against the United States or its coalition partners. Any person who has committed a belligerent act or any person who has directly supported such hostilities in aid of such enemy forces. And in those cases, what can the president do? Well, among other things, the president can place these people into detention under the law of war without trial until the end of hostilities. The only problem with that is that the end of hostilities doesn't really mean anything when fighting a war on terror. See, there's no actual declaration of war, nor is there a provision that lets us know when the war on terror will be over with. Under the authority of this bill, even a U.S. citizen simply suspected of terrorism would not have to be judged by a court but could be arrested, held without charges, even sent to detention overseas without due process. Kentucky Senator Rand Paul argued with one of the bill's authors, Senator John McCain, on the Senate floor Tuesday. Under the provisions, would it be possible that an American citizen then could be declared an enemy combatant and sent to Guantanamo Bay and detained indefinitely? I think that as long as that uh, individual uh, no matter who they are, if they pose a threat to the security of the United States of America, should not be allowed to continue that threat. And I think that's the majority of American public opinion. Senator Paul isn't alone in his opposition. In the Senate, 37 U.S. Senators voted to remove this power from the defense bill, but they were defeated by the votes of 61 Senators. 27 percent of detainees who were released got back in the fight, and were responsible for the deaths of Americans. We need to take every step necessary to prevent that from happening. If 27% of detainees, by the way, got back into the fight, that means 73% did not. But here's what you need to know. Have you heard people say that if you're not doing anything wrong, you have nothing to worry about? Lawmakers and law enforcement say that all the time. But who didn't say that? The framers of the Constitution. They didn't create rights like the right to a speedy trial the right to have your charges against you made known, the right to challenge your accuser in court, the right to a trial before a jury of your peers because they were trying to find loopholes for the guilty. 
Those rights are there for the sake of the innocent, so that through due process, your innocence can be proven. And that is reality check. And of course, at the time that the Senate sent that bill on to the president, President Obama was saying that he would, in fact, veto that bill because of Section 1034. It turns out that not only would the president sign that bill into law, but his administration, well, they may have been the ones who demanded the provision be included in the first place. That part of the story when we come back.